Hello, Johnny London here once again, but today I've something a little bit different for you. It's a story, a ghost story for Halloween. So, if you're all sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. It had been a long day for Jack London. His work as warehouse man, a uh, person, had dragged on well into the early evening and as he hurried home along the canal it was already almost dark. He passed by a boat that was out late negotiating the town lock but thought little of it. His mind was set on getting home, getting a fresh change of clothes and meeting with his friends over at the local for a few beers. Could you stop and give us a hand? came a voice out of the near darkness. I'm all on my own and I could use a hand. I'm sorry said Jack, I cannot. I'm late for something very important. And he hurried on. Thanks for nothing came the reply. With the lock soon far behind him Jack could hear the clatter of the mechanism as the paddles raised and lowered. Rat-a-tat-a-tat-a-tattle they went. He'll be all right, thought Jack to himself. Back at his house now, Jack had just time to wolf down a couple of cold sausage rolls before taking a quick shower, then donning his fresh clothes. He left the house and continued back down the canal, but as he neared the lock, he could see flashing lights. There was an ambulance and two police cars. As he reached the lock an officer came up to him. I'm sorry sir there's been an incident on the towpath and it's closed from here onwards. What's happened? said Jack. He could see a narrow boat moored just past the lock. It was the boat he had seen earlier. Young lad out with his boat. Slipped and fell came the reply. Oh Oh well, said Jack. I'm going to the pub so I just need to get over to the other side. You'll have to go to the bridge at the other end of the town I'm afraid sir. Oh, uh, okay, said Jack. He turned and began to walk back the way he had come. But looking over his shoulder he saw that the officers were now quite busy. So by the cover of darkness he walked quickly across the bottom gates as he had often done and was soon away to the other side of the canal. The pub was not far now, just through a long alley which brought him out to the end of a street and halfway down that street on the right hand side on a corner was the Navigator's Arms. Upon entering the pub Jake spotted his pals at the bar and headed over. Didn't think you were going to make it, Jake, said Steve, who was supping on a pint of dark ale. Well, I got held up at work. You know how it is. We're short staff these days and I had to stay on till we finished up all of today's orders, Jake replied. Well, man, you look like you've seen a ghost. Here, get this down you, said Dave, a Scot, probably. A slightly built fellow who'd called Ted, the barkeep, over the moment he'd seen Jake arrive. It was a pint of strong lager, Jake's favourite. And he gladly took hold of the tall cold glass and began to drink. Did you hear about at the lock? said Terry, the third of Jake's pals. No, uh, I mean, yeah, there were two police cars there when I came past, replied Jake, wiping the froth from his mouth. Dave continued, some guy got himself drowned, he did, slipped and fell while working his boat. Course, shouldn't I have been out there in the dark anyways, silly bugger? Well, there was much drinking to be done, and the four men set about doing their best. And by chucking out time, it was fair to say that they were all feeling suitably refreshed. Outside, the four men said their goodbyes and headed off to their homes. Except for Dave, he was going to get a kebab. It had turned rather chilly 
and Jake fastened his jacket or should it have been Jack but anyway and headed back up the street the way he had come his footsteps echoed in the still night air as he went back along the alley and soon he was out at the lock again leaving the street lights behind Jake headed over to the lock the black and white markings on the gates were just visible he stopped for a moment and peered into the deep, still water. Everyone had gone now, and there was just a piece of that flimsy red and white incident tape strung across the towpath and the top gates. Imagine, he thought to himself, drowning in there. For one thing, it was probably filthy. But then Jack heard a noise. It was coming from one of the mechanisms. He walked over to take a look. Probably it had been left incorrectly and now was slipping on its own. rat a tat a tat a tat a tattle it went. But on reaching the first mechanism, Jake could see nothing untoward. Must be my bloody imagination, he said under his breath, as he took hold of the handrail and began to cross the locked gates. Halfway across now, he reached for the second gate's handrail as he did so, there came that sound again. rat a tat a tat a tat a tat Jake was startled. He stepped forward, but his foot caught on the raised piece of wood in between the gates. All at once, he felt his balance go as he grasped desperately trying to find the handrail, to no avail. He felt himself falling, at first into the darkness around him, and then into the cold grasp of the waters below. Down, down, down he went until he could go no further and he must have been at the silty lock bottom. But Jake could swim and he began to push upward, upward through the cold dark waters. But something grasped Jake's leg, seeming to pull him down back into the murky waters. Thanks for nothing, he heard a voice say. Thanks for nothing and Jake sank back to the bottom of the lock, never to be seen again. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little story, and wherever you are, stay safe.